There was one last thing I quickly wanted to show you. I forgot in the last video I mentioned that I fried the AT Mega 328 when I, uh, one of my sensors, I actually, for some reason, I managed to plug the um, cables into the connector with the signal, uh, uh, the, what do they do? Yeah, I got the plus and the minus mixed up. Only one of the cables out of all the ones I did, and I checked it twice too before I powered it up, and I visually it just looked right, and for whatever reason, even though I've got them marked as black, red, and white for the power, the, the, the zero volts and the signal, uh, I completely missed it, and when I powered it up, um, as you can see, this was the uh, AT Mega 328 that was plugged in at the time. Uh, it just went up very, very quickly into a poof of smoke, and you can see here that it burnt bad enough that the actual leg disconnected and um, it put a little bit of a burn mark on the inside of my lid of this and uh, basically the chip is completely dead it's almost fractured in half but it's blown the top off it the leg off of it and I think um, underneath yeah big bubble on the bottom of the chip as well um, and the, the socket now because of the heat is slightly damaged it would probably work but I'm probably going to desolder that socket and put a new socket in there because I won't trust it for anything serious. So that's what can happen when you allow 24 volt logic, 24 volt control signals, even though it's only a signal, to come along and connect to a 5 volt Arduino Uno or any other controller. And so even though, you know, even without that issue of having happened, um, I was putting in, I was going to add the opto isolators anyway to improve the reliability and to isolate things. I wanted, I was in a rush and I wanted to just test it and it should have been fine if I hadn't made that wiring mistake um, to connect to this without the limit switches being enabled. Um, and of course, the minute I powered it up, it literally went up in seconds in a puff of smoke and destroyed itself. So, lesson to all check your wiring once, twice, three times. Um, disconnect your connectors and check them all before you power up the system. So that's one of the things I actually did with this main board was I had, um, before I went and powered up the main board here, unplugged, and all of these unplugged, and I actually metered them to make sure that, you know, when I wired these up, I didn't make any shorts. Um, I made sure that I was getting the correct voltages on every one of these things from the power supply. Um, and the same with this, the DC to DC converter, I unplugged it, made sure I was getting 7 volts out before I plugged it into the Arduino. Um, and even up here, I put in the meter and read all the power connections up on the end of the cables that are on the gantry here. And I just missed the fact that it said minus 24 instead of plus 24. When you're actually going through them quite quickly, you look for the numbers and sometimes you forget about the sign. And so I just powered it up and poof, I fried it. Fortunately, I had, uh, and I've got a number of AT Mega 328s as well as uh, more than one Arduino Uno. So I was actually able to quickly replace it. But I promised myself and made sure that before I um, powered it up again, I would wire up this little isolator board. And I will, as I said, will provide schematics for everything, including this little isolator board that I built um, so that you can do it yourself. Um, like I said, on a small system where the control is very, very close to the switches, maybe not essential, but still recommended. Keeping your controller isolated uh, from the noise, because, you know, you've got these stepper motors going, they're, they're pulsing at hundreds of hertz, um, you know, several amps on, on the coils, and so there's going to be a lot of noise floating around. Um, you don't want those spikes being driven into the logic of your Arduino. And if you can avoid it, you really want to, if you can help it, you really want to put in something like opto isolators just so that your control and power system is completely isolated from the Arduino. As I said, the only thing I have here on my Arduino now is a common ground point uh, for the zero volts, but that's it. There is no other signals that are connecting directly to that Arduino that could cause any damage to anything. So, you know, I might fry an opto isolator, but I actually rated, I put in a, a 1K resistor as well as the two LEDs. So I've got maybe 20 volts across a 1K, so 20 milliamps going through um, the LEDs, which is more than enough. And that's assuming I'm driving it with 24 volts. So, uh, which I am at, at this particular point, but if you're using a, you know, a 12 volt power supply or something for your steppers and your control logic and everything, then, you know, you would have, it would be less current, but it would still work because I'm using Darlington drivers on the opto isolator. 
um, so it doesn't take much illumination at all. Um, it would work probably with less than a milliamp going through the uh, LEDs in the opto isolator and still get a good strong uh, logic into the controller. Um, the other thing that I was going to say, oh yeah, it was with your power supplies, um, strongly recommend if you know even if you're using a 12 volt power supply or a 24 volt power supply for your steppers, um, use a separate power supply for the actual motor control the motor drive than you do from your logic because there will be a lot of noise being generated and you may get away with it for a while but eventually you know you may get something happen and you're going to ruin a job or something like that you're doing and it's just not worth the risk of having the same power supply for your controller as you're using for your stepper motors just keep them separate you know um, it doesn't have to have a big power supply either for the uh, controller in this case it's just a Arduino Uno so it's probably not even taking 100 milliamps for that. I haven't measured the current yet, but it's not going to be anything more than that, I'm sure. Uh, so, you know, it just even a little wall wart to, to power the controller. Um, cheap, easy to get a hold of, already built, and just put an extra socket on the board that will allow you to control it. So anyway, that's it for now. Next video is going to be um, with everything all hooked up out in the uh, workshop. And uh, we'll also do another one on... Uh, tuning the steppers and everything that should be a lot shorter hopefully <laughs> bye